Hi everyone, it's Mama Purin here. Today I'm going to show you my design process for my Magical Girl OCs. I've been playing with the concept of a Magical Girl slash Boy series for a few months now. Unfortunately, I've been pretty burned out lately, so I didn't have any motivation. But now it's summer break and I've rested for a bit and now I'm super ready to get back. This video format of designing a bulk of characters is inspired by other artists like Jinja Ninja OWO with our Prism series and AVD Illustrates with his Concept Corner series. Jinja Ninja OWO with our Prism series also inspired my renewed love for Magical Girls that made me create my own story and universe both magical girls and boys, among other loose influences like My Hero Academia, Miraculous Sailor Moon and Ruby, as well as others magical girl series and tropes. First of all, our main character is Ayumi. Ayumi is a very extroverted and easily distracted girl that receives a magical compact that turns her into a magical guardian and now is attending a sort of school slash academy slash college for magical guardians. Here they'll study different fields while finally making their debut as guardians. Ayumi is a total nerd, especially when it comes to games. She loves RPGs and cozy games. She always carries her portable console with her and she normally wears jackets, even in the summer, so that she can put it in her pockets because God knows how small or non-existent pockets on girls' clothing are. I actually like to think that she probably streams her gameplays and she might have a bit of a following. You can also imagine that someone that has little concentration and loves gaming is prone to procrastination a little. Thankfully, her sister is always there to help her. Her transformed version is inspired by a high fashion dress that I saw, with the voluminous skirt and the shorter part in the front. I took it a step further and made it shorter and I gave her bloomers as well and also the sleeves that she has are inspired by ancient Greek clothing. I thought to give her shoes or something on her ankles, but because of her powers it felt right to have her bare foot. Uh, she has a lot of fluff in her skirt, personally it's something I love on dresses, but it's also perfect because she has water magic and hopefully you can perceive the fluff at sea foam. Honestly, the hardest part of her design was the colors. The colors are always the hardest part for me. I wanted to give her a greenish blue color, but as I went on, I decided to go for straight up blue. Checking the contrast when you're putting colors down is literally the best thing you can do during the process. To be honest, that way your character becomes much more readable. And I can assure you that you'll end up with a really different result than if you just throw colors randomly. And here we have our Ayumi. Next up we have Himari, Ayumi's twin sister. She's much calmer and focused than the sister. Essentially, she is the brains of the team, easily the smartest of the group. Her wits don't come from nowhere though, she worked for it. She is a mom friend, calm, collected, always with a sweet smile. She loves to cook comfort food and give it to her friends to cheer them up. However, she does have a bit of a temper. In fact, whenever someone does something that gets her mad, she is terrifying, otherwise she is a sweetheart. She loves to play the violin, but she's a bit too shy to perform in front of everyone, so the only way to hear her play is to overhear it coming from her room. Her power is wind-based. I wanted her color to be white and purple. That gave me problems in terms of contrast. I had to bite the bullet there. I wanted her to be a ballerina themed, more specifically swan lake based. That's why her big bow ties in six pieces to form a wing shape. Her eye shape is based on the makeup ballerinas put on as well. I love her civilian design, but I believe her magical girl design needs more work. I think her ribbon can be better executed and her hair is bothering me. I have to get rid of one of the elements and to be honest, I think I'll just make her hairstyle a bun with a bow. Her head area is too heavy and for a character whose power is wind, her design should be everything but heavy. For now the drawing will stay like this, but I'll most likely change it eventually. Never mind, I ended up changing it after all. Here it is, except I still wasn't happy with our dress, so I changed it a bit. 
You would think I'd finish here, but no, she looked too bland, so I changed her hair again and gave her a swoopy beats that kind of resembled the swoopy hair that she has in her civilian design. I'm still not sure about this design, but I think I leave it like it is. Next up is Miyuki, the group's official leader. She is a seemingly perfect girl that everyone looks up to. She is calm, collected, smart and a very work hard, no fun type of girl. This contrasts with our protagonist's easygoing personality. Miyuki is not in the academy to joke around and tends to feel like her teammates are. Sometimes Ayumi finds her annoying because of this, but the reality is that Miyuki is the best leader they could have, as she knows how to take the resources she has, in this case her teammates' natural abilities, in the most effective way. She is a good person with strong morals, strong sense of justi justice and honor, and she tends to expect the same from others. She has her reasons to be like this, although I'm not going to reveal them right now, because I think these are spoilers for her character arc. About her powers, still going on the elements theme, are stone based. Because of her very rigid personality, her magical form is based on a mix of a military Lolita fashion, this one runway outfit, that is simply gorgeous. To be honest, I feel like looking at high fashion looks is the best way to brainstorm magical girl outfits because they can have very interesting silhouettes and broaden their visual library when it comes to cuts and accessories and how far you can go with silhouettes. Fun fact, Sailor Moon's creator would look at runway fashion as inspiration for character outfits. Choosing your main colors was kinda hard, I wanted her to have a darker complexion, so my first instinct was to put her on navy blue. But then Ayumi's power is water based, so it made more sense for her to be the blue one. And then I thought about giving her orange, but I felt like she would be kinda monochromatic, and I didn't want that, so I gave her green because it is the color related to the element of Earth. It goes really well with the rest of the team's colors and it kinda goes with the military theme that she also has going on. After choosing the main color, it got a lot easier to put everything together, though I had to make a few adjustments after the recording. Next up is Kin. Kin is a soft and cute girl that is into fashion. She loves Harajuku fashion and when I designed her I had both Decore K and Party K fashion in mind. Uh, that's why she has a lot of colorful stickers on her face and hair, a colorful makeup look and a big ass dress. She loves helping people, being in her family's boutique or helping out during storms. It doesn't matter, you have a problem, she's there for you. That said, she might look cute and because of that, people tend to underestimate her, but she is actually a lot stronger than she looks. Strategically, it is great because her enemies don't expect much from her at first. Now, about her design, her powers are electricity based, so she got my favorite color, yellow. I also wanted to give a nod to Pikachu, of course, and so I gave her red face paint on her cheeks, which goes really well because she has face decorations in her civilian design as well. I wanted to have a chubbier team member because we don't get to see that a lot in magical girl media, or superhero media for that matter. What hurts is that whenever a chubby character happens to be a superhero, there is this disproportional uproar and hate on that character saying that they're lazy and they can't be superheroes because of their weight. Just really dumb stuff. I want a chubby magical girl so here she is and there's nothing you can do about it. Because of her fashion sense, I wanted her to have a toned down magical form and because her powers are ele electricity based, I felt l inspired by vikings because of Thor. Uh, you can still see the influences in her big arm protector thingies and her furry boots. Color wise she was easiest, which was a surprise, especially when you take into consideration that she's not as monochromatic as her teammates, at least in her civilian design. And finally, Akko. Akko is an active and hot-headed girl that prefers more physical attacks and is the most likely to connect her elemental powers, in her case fire, to her weapon. She's determined, she can be a little blunt 
and she isn't able to weigh your words sometimes, but she's super well-meaning and cares a lot for her friends. She's also a helpless romantic, because I find it really funny, and ah, she also has a cat mouth for the same reason. God, she was hard to design. So, her civilian design was pretty easy. I pretty much knew what I wanted her to look like since the beginning, but her magical version was without a doubt the hardest one to design to date. She isn't very feminine, so it didn't feel right to put her on a dress. And there were things on her first concept that I really wanted to keep, like her corset with lace and her cape. I really wanted her to feel like a fantasy undress or something like that, so I searched for magical girls, JRPG hunters and JRPG characters in general to see if I could take this, these elements and make them work. Two characters that inspired me a lot were Sayaka from Madoka Magica because of her corset and Amber from Genjin Impact because of her shorts and her bow. The bow was so cute, I had to give Ako one as well. Her cape is a nod to her original concept, which was a Red Riding Hood based character. In fact, all my girls used to be based on fairy tale main characters. I think you can guess at least another one because the theme changed a lot since then. Her cape also has a gradient and is torn up in the ends to have a similar shape to a flame. I may go further with this concept next time I draw her. I'm still not super sure about her design, but for now it'll stay like this. And we're done! This is the legendary quintet. I'm working on a story for them and I like having the main plot loosely structured, however a lot can change and most likely will, story, characters, whatever, but I think the fun part of this series will be seeing the progression of the story and how my methods change with time. And yes, I'm hoping to make more Magical Guardian videos. The next one might include some magical boys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to, and until next time, bye!